Hello, my name is JJ Prakash. I'm a principal solutions architect with Alpha Omega Integration, and I focus on enterprise architecture, technology modernization, and digital transformation. A little about my company. Alpha Omega Integration is a minority owned small business that was created in 2014. We provide high quality collaborative IT and business consulting services with the expertise and capabilities to serve customers in the commercial and public sectors. We identify disruptive technologies and trends and continue to build out a product portfolio specifically to help our customers with the evolving challenges. These technologies include robotic process automation or RPA, cloud technologies, DevSecOps, and no-code, low-code development and all have been key to enabling our customers to accomplish their expanding missions. The topic for the discussion today is on how to implement uh, DevSecOps in a legacy environment or to support legacy applications. As an agenda, I'll talk about and introduce what DevSecOps is, talk a little bit about what I mean by a legacy platform, and then the need for DevSecOps uh, in implementing for uh, DevSecOps or legacy applications, some of the challenges that you will face when you're trying to introduce uh, DevSecOps, and then I will conclude and open it up for Q&A. So let's start with some definitions and begin with inter introducing uh, what DevSecOps is. This graphic from Gartner illustrates a comprehensive approach used to describe DevSecOps. For me, DevSecOps is a mindset and a cultural change that organizations have adopted to improve their agility, quality, and security of the products they develop, while continuously uh, collab improving, increasing collaboration within the organization. It is about reducing the time to market while continuously ensuring quality and security through automation. When organizations move to agile methodologies, it increased the collaboration between business and development teams, and they were able to create better products and increase, increase the velocity of product development compared to the traditional waterfall methodology. However, they soon realized that there are a number of steps beyond the completion of uh, development that was still manual for the product to reach the customer. So product development was fast, but the operational aspect of testing the code and deploying it to a production environment and monitoring the applications mostly manual, and it took way too long. One of the advantages of Agile was to release a product fast, analyze customer feedback, and to incrementally or continuously improve the product. Delays in getting this feedback hampered product development, and organizations urged to address changing market conditions or bring value to their customers from the feedback they had received. As organizations started to realize this challenge, they looked to optimize the development operation process. So instead of development teams throwing the code over the wall, they started merging development operations activities to improve the efficiency of the end-to-end -end product development lifecycle by automating the tasks. This became DevOps. As DevOps started to mature within the organizations, they started to realize that the speed they were gaining from DevOps was not giving them enough time to validate the security posture of the product that they were developing. So they started incorporating security in the DevOps process, and this became DevSecOps. Combining Agile with DevSecOps, organizations were able to develop products much faster while ensuring quality and security and they were able to solicit feedback and react to that feedback in a much higher, faster velocity and continuously improve the product. So now let's look at this, uh, uh, this uh, the, the, picture, the uh, graphic that you see, and let's start looking at the bubbles that are, I call them bubbles for the development and the ops bubbles. So on the development bubble, you see adapt, plan, create, verify, and pre-production. And these are typically act activities that take place within a sprint. This is your traditional Agile Sprint activities, and you can combine that with continuous integration and continuous deployment to validate the product in a test environment and make it available for release to production. In the operations bubble, you're deploying the code to production, 
monitoring for threats and feedback, and using this to continuously improve your product. As you see in the graphic, security encapsulates the entire development operations. And if you look at it, and if you look at the monitoring and analytics inside the development bubble, you're, you're using automation to detect known vulnerabilities as well as to test the defects based on your product requirements. If you look at the monitoring and analytics inside the operations bubble, this is where you're tracking the unknowns and then using this to improve your product and your processes. The monitoring and analytics inside the development bubble is called shift left, where you are proactively looking for issues and the monitoring and analytics in the ops bubble is called shift right, where the monitoring is taking place to identify the unknowns or, or new threats and then providing this feedback to development teams for continuous improvement. So you can see that by implementing Dev DevSecOps, you are creating a culture of continuous learning and incrementally product development to meet customer needs. So let's look further into DevSecOps. DevSecOps is implemented using a CI-CD pipeline. CI-CD stands for continuous integrations and continuous delivery. This graphic provides a good representation of the activities that would be expected to be automated in a CI-CD pipeline. The activities can be tailored to support an organization's maturity and needs. The activities identified in green is the starting point for the CI-CD pipeline and is tied to your development activities. And the source code control or version control system is the one that triggers it. So your source code, source code control system must have a branching strategy where any code, any code moved to production will be from the main or master branch. There will also be a development branch and then developers will create their own feature branches to develop a set of features. This is what is identified in the first two green boxes in the graphic. When a developer completes this feature development and checks his code into your source code control system, the CI-CD should be triggered to automatically compile the code and to do a build. As part of this automation, the CI-CD pipeline must be configured to run through functional automated testing, to static, do static and dynamic code analysis, security testing. Each of these tests should have an automated gate review that the code must pass before moving to the next stage. For example, if the product fails a security testing gate, then the process is automatically stopped and the DevSecOps team is notified of the issues for it to be remedied. And this can be automated. The, tickets, the ticket creation for this notification can also be automated so that you have traceability if for any issues found. The advantage of this, and a developer can get immediate feedback on the impact of his changes to quality and security and can resolve this quickly as opposed to finding this much later in the process, which introduces delays and rework. If all the gates are passed, the CI-CD pipeline will tell you an artifact that can be deployed. These activities are represented in blue. Once the artifact is created, it, the, the artifact can be deployed to a QA and staging environments for further security testing, as well as user acceptance testing. Once all of the testing has been completed, the artifact can be deployed to production. These activities are in red. Once production deployment is complete, there needs to be continuous monitoring of the application as identified in yellow. Before I get further in, in my presentation, I also wanted to set the stage on what I mean by a legacy platform. We often hear, if it's not broken, don't mess with it. But realistically, all that you're doing is to extending the organization's technical debt. Disruption is happening across all industries, so change is inevitable, and the rate of change is also accelerating. So you cannot sit idle if you're looking to grow. Legacy platforms will often have manual processes to deploy code to production. They will go through many layers of manual testing that will take time, and they will likely lack standards on how technology is implemented. It's likely the technology stack will be dated and will open them up for security risks, and they will have high operational costs due to possibly being on-prem infrastructure. However, 
organizations that are still using legacy platforms are still dependent on them for their core business functions and cannot be readily replaced. So a rip and replace strategy will not be an option due to time and budget constraints. Legacy systems can also slow down business growth and organizations start moving towards modernization or digital transformation. These legacy applications will continue to play a role until you're able to fully modernize a technology stack. And this may not happen for a very long period of time due to the fact that they may not have the institutional knowledge on how these applications need to be changed. However, as architects, we do need to develop solutions that will allow the old legacy platforms to coexist with the new technologies you're bringing to an organization while providing the organization a pathway to continuously modernize. Now let's look at why you may need to consider DevSecOps for your legacy applications. When starting a new technology implementation, it's easy to take advantage of the modern development practices. An engineer or an engineering team <clears throat> can create new projects with one of the cloud providers and with a few clicks, create an environment, create a code repository and set up DevSecOps pipeline that auto deploys a code to cloud infrastructure of choice. And this can happen all relatively fast. However, this may not be feasible in a legacy environment. Hence, there is a great divide between the legacy and the new worlds. Add Agile and DevSecOps to the equation with the goals of increasing release frequency and reducing time to market. We end up with a challenge that organizations must tackle to support organization growth. So if you have legacy applications, let's look at how you can go about prioritizing which, which ones you should focus on first. In the legacy world, applications are mostly operational or backend systems, and they were siloed for specific business functions. As we look for business agility and start developing new methods and technologies to drive speed to market, applications can no longer be siloed. We need to look at solutions holistically and understand ecosystems that are loosely uh, integrated or coupled to develop flexible solutions to support an organization's growth and provide customer value. For example, if, if you look at what is going on within digital transformation, you put the customer at the center of the solution. And one of the first things we do is to understand the types of customers and the product that and the product plans to target what their needs are, so a personalized journey can be developed for them. We document these as personas, customer journeys. We develop solutions for each specific persona and each personalized uh, customer journey by mapping the interactions with the organizations and what features and functions are needed to be offered for each customer interaction. This customer journey has no technology boundaries and will span multiple applications, some of which could be legacy in, in nature. These customer personas and journeys help an organization understand the customer needs and what value you can provide to the customer as they interact with the organization. As you start analyzing each customer interaction, and if, if, and if this interaction is being serviced by a legacy application, then this application is a candidate to be either modernized or to get integrated into the value stream the organization is trying to offer to a customer. Once this legacy application has been identified as a candidate, then the architects must prepare this application to build and automate the CI-CD pipeline. We also need to be aware of how to secure this application, uh, this legacy application, and is, as it's now going, can be exposed to a customer's interaction, and then finally, the quality and the performance of the application also must be taken into consideration while supporting an agile methodology on how on increasing velocity of product development. In the previous slide, I discussed the need for why you need to incorporate DevSecOps into the legacy application, but it's not without its challenges. It's likely your legacy platform has a monolithic architecture you, and you need, a, you need a few releases per year. You needed to have a planned downtime that was advertised months ago 
and a rollback strategy. This also creates organization stress as it took months of planning and teams had to figure out how to get their work prioritized and started for one of these releases. I remember when I was working on an upgrade for a legacy platform, we did lots of dry runs as we could not easily predict how much downtime we needed. This meant additional hardware needs and a weekend full of activities, not only for the IT folks, but also for the business folks who were required to manually validate the deployments were successful and the application worked in a production environment. All of this is not practical today as there is an expectation that an organization is able to continuously evolve its product offering while the application is still live all the time. So how do you go about fixing this? First, we need to understand what your current processes are for fair legacy platforms. Start creating a process map of all of the activities that take place for an application to go from development to production. Include deployment along with the time it takes. This includes development, build and test time, time it takes to shut down the current applications and batch jobs, time for any backups, time for startup and uh, uh, startup time for the new services, uh, any application security testing, and time any, any time that's planned for rollbacks. This will give you an idea of where your largest challenges, risks, and bottlenecks are, and what your low hanging fruits are so that we can start focusing on that. Start with the low hanging fruits, and this will help gain confidence with your skills. As you map your process, understand what tasks can be made a part of your DevSecOps pipeline or your CICD pipeline. Develop the scripts to automate this. Scripting the process to automate the pipeline should be planned from the early stages, as this will reduce the cognitive burden on your team to keep track of what needs to get done. Beyond compiling a code, you should look to incorporate static and dynamic code scans into the pipeline to check for security and vulnerabilities. In the event you find vulnerabilities, plan for what remediation processes you need to resolve these issues and the timeline for the, uh, for, the, to, for the resolution. If refactoring code will help to reduce a major bottleneck and help with automation, be open to this idea and start tackling this. Also be open to the fact that some applications may not be able to support DevSecOps and pl make plans to work around this. For example, if an application does not need to have incremental ch changes, to the, then the existing process may be good enough. If a legacy application is slotted for replacement, then you should hold off on making any changes, uh, any changes to support DevSecOps. In the previous set of slides, I have set the stage for what is DevSecOps and why it might be important for you to consider incorporating this into your legacy applications as your organization starts moving towards technology modernization or digital transformation. We also looked at some of the challenges you will face, you'll likely face as you start implementing DevSecOps. So let's look further into the implementation of how you go about introducing DevSecOps into your organization. In my first slide, I talked about this is a mindset and a cultural change that organization must be aware. So before you start buying tools and start implementing DevSecOps, make sure that your organization is ready for this change to take place. This is not just about technology. If you're already using Agile methodologies or they're part of the organization using DevSecOps, then adopting DevSecOps to the legacy applications may not be a challenge. However, if these are new concepts, then you need to ready the organization for this change and, and the challenge. Be realistic that this will be a challenge and will take time. Identify a few champions who are open to change, have them trained in Agile and DevSecOps. Agile, if you're going to go DevSecOps, and if you're already not in Agile, you might as well take, take that leap as well. Or bring in new resources with these new skills. But be sure that you are not, you are, you are not trying to replace your existing resource with the new. You do not want to lose your institutional knowledge as this will be critical to your success as you move to DevSecOps. Create a change management program with targeted outcomes. Use this opportunity to introduce Agile and DevSecOps into the organization. 
Let these champions socialize the value of the modern approaches to product development, focus on the organizational value, improve customer satisfaction, and don't make it all about just the technology. With a move to automation comes the fear of job loss. Address these as part of the change management program. Identify a pilot project and start small. Remember, we did the process mapping earlier. We identified some low hanging fruits. Start with one of those applications, one of those pro pro processes. Learn from this success and continue to scale up. And then continue to celebrate the small wins as your organization evolves uh, and adapts to these new changes. As we look to introduce DevSecOps into your organization, I discussed about how to get the organization ready for this change. And now let's, and I also told you, you know, don't make it, don't focus about technology at the early stage. But now let's look to, and start looking to what can be done to enable this change. First, you must understand your software maturity. In one of, in a couple of my earliest slides, I talked about the uh, tasks that take place in DevSecOps. And we also discussed about creating a process map that captures all the activities and time from de development deployment free legacy applications. Doing a crosswalk between these two artifacts or, or these two uh, documents will give you an idea of how mature your current processes are as you look to move towards adopting Agile and DevSecOps and running for automation. So how do you go about sequencing of maturing a DevSecOps process? Start with your code management strategy. You need to have a source code control system that manages your software versioning and that it supports a branching strategy. Start looking at your testing strategy. If you are doing manual testing, look for opportunities to automate your testing processes. If you want to automate the process and gain velocity, test that automation is a must. Once you have source code control system and your test automation done, you can develop the CI part of your CI CD pipeline to automatically run your test automations to, across your code. This can be triggered to run every time a change is made to the code and checked into the source code control system. CI should validate this new code that was checked in, in across your test automation suite and your security scans, and also do a regression test on the, on the rest of the code. While developing new code, make sure to update your test automation scripts as well. If possible, integrate the issue tracking into your CI pipeline to create tech to automatically create tickets for any defects. This will increase traceability between requirements and defects and increase accountability within your teams as you know, you're able to run metrics across the defects and the securities they were finding. Start incorporating security code scans to test for vulnerabilities in your code and then identify a remediation process. Finally, set up CD to deliver the artifact to a, uh, either one of the environments to production if you want or test and make this available for deployment. And then finally focus on monitoring. Understand that this will be a long journey. This will, this will change the culture of how an organization will develop products. So be patient. And as I said before, celebrate the success at every step. As I conclude, organizations need to understand that DevSecOps is becoming the norm of how software is delivered or deployed to, from development to test to production environments. DevSecOps processes is developed using scripts that allows organizations to automate as much of the process as you feel comfortable with. For exa example, some organizations auto-deploy code to production, while others auto-deploy only to a development and testing environments while the production deployment is done manually. Automation is done by scripting of the process, which removes the cognitive burden from person or the knowledge being with only a few set of people. Further automation allows you to enforce standards, quality and security checks as part of your development lifecycle. Scripting can also be extended to write infrastructure as code and automate the creation of environments and then take them down when not required. This is for ideal for creating minimal downtime deployments or for testing where you don't have to have infrastructure available all the time. 
Within my company, Alpha Omega Integration, we have developed DevOps, DevSecOps accelerators for various cloud providers to provide this level of automation for testing security compliance and to spin up and down service as the need for our engagements. This allows us to go into an organization and accelerate DevSecOps processes. Organizations that still rely on legacy platform must understand the benefits of DevSecOps and incorporate these practices to support their growth, increase collaboration, and to ad address customer needs. The leaders within our organizations must champion these benefits and develop practices and methodologies that allow new and legacy technologies to work as a, a single ecosystem to benefit the organizations and produce value to their customers. Finally, don't make this all about technology. Create change management programs to increase organization awareness. Start with pilots, scale up as your organization gains confidence and scales to automate the process. This will be a long journey. Understand this will change the culture of how an organization develops products. So be patient and celebrate the success at every step of the way. Thank you for your time. And with this, I'll open it up for a quick Q&A.